Here are some of history's greatest rivalries. The United States vs. the Soviet Union. Duke vs. North Carolina. Bugs Bunny vs. Mickey Mouse. Woj vs. Shams. When NBA free agency starts on June 30th, fans across the globe will be checking Twitter to see the moves being made. And these two guys will be at center stage. Sports reporters live unique lives. I don't, that's what I think it is, but I don't know that. Their career success is predicated on forming, building, and maintaining professional relationships. What we see on the surface is a handful of people giving us breaking sports news, trades, signings, and firings. But behind the scenes, a lot of time, effort, and energy was exerted by them to reach that point. In the NBA, it's all about two guys, Adrian Wojnarowski and Shams Sharania. After that, there's a big drop-off followed by guys like Chris Haynes, Ryan Windhorst, and Mark Stein. How did these two guys rise to the top? The short answer is drive, persistence, and trust. Networks like ESPN and Fox have realized the benefit of having a top newsbreaker at their company. Why would the Jazz do that? And they're willing to pay for it. For 10 years, Woj, short for Wojnarowski, was with Yahoo Sports, dominating the NBA sports newsbreaking industry. He mentored his protege, Shams Sharania, and with Chris Haynes also being there, Yahoo found themselves with a super team. At the time, Woj called Shams the best young reporter in the business. ESPN had closely been monitoring Woj's rise, and when his contract with Yahoo was up in 2017, they opened their checkbook for him. They gave him a five-year, $35 million contract, so $7 million per year. So he decided to make the jump. This is comparable to LeBron leaving Cleveland, Yahoo, for Miami, ESPN. The big benefit for ESPN hiring Woj is that the headline can now read, as first reported by ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski, instead of Yahoo. However, to feel like they're really getting their money's worth, they decided to put him on TV as well, which is not good for anyone. Woj is not a natural, in front of the camera, talent, and it's seen nearly every time he's on TV stumbling over his words. He dropping down uh, to number, uh, number five to the Detroit Pistons. He has a very particular set of skills. Those skills are not conducive to being on TV. He does his work in the shadows behind closed doors, not in front of the masses. When Woj left Yahoo, that meant Shams was now the big fish in the small pond. He took advantage of this new responsibility and freedom and was first to some of the biggest free agency signings in 2017. Their relationship, which was once positive, seemed to have taken a turn when Woj ditched Yahoo for the big league ESPN gig. Shams liked to tweet criticizing Woj for being too political. However, a year after Woj left, Shams' contract with Yahoo came to an end. He reportedly had many suitors, but chose the athletic stadium. Chris Haynes would also go on to ditch Yahoo, who went from having the top three NBA newsbreakers to zero. Since their breakup, Woj and Shams have been the go-to reporters for NBA news. Anytime something is reported by someone else, the approach many people take is wait and see if Woj or Shams tweets it to make sure it's real. The competition these two have is unique because there's no real scoreboard and the winner and loser is determined by Twitter users who are not known to be the most rational people in the world. Looking through the replies of these guys' tweets is generally a shit show, spews of late if one tweets the same news a mere 30 seconds after the other. The first few days of free agency and the trade deadline are the two biggest times of the year for these guys. It's their Super Bowl, and fans notice. Accounts like StatMuse and The Ringer do a great job of tracking their competition, even though Woj doesn't seem to particularly enjoy it. In some instances, it's clear they have the same source. At that point, it becomes a race to see who can send the tweet faster. And when one is ever so slightly late, fans once again notice. The amount of stress sports newsbreakers like Woj and Shams must go through on a daily basis is unthinkable. They're busy year-round and likely cannot even silence their phones to get a good night's sleep. They're a slave to their phones and missing out, or even worse, being late, to a report can leave a black eye on their career. This is unhealthy and cannot be good for them in the long run. So this is like the other day. Yeah, those are all real stats. Sometimes, especially during trade deadline, free agency, 
draft, it's usually in the 20s, just because I mean, I'm getting you know two, three hours of sleep. If I'm not sleeping, I'm on my phone like constantly. The amount of power Woj and Shams have is getting worrisome. Teams, players, and agents see this unfolding and use that to their advantage. So next time you see a report or a story or any type of opinion from Woj or Shams, ask yourself who is benefiting from this information being made public. Oftentimes it's an agency such as Clutch Sports or CAA or a player's camp. And it's not actually an opinion coming from the reporters. If you want to read actual basketball analysis and opinions as opposed to news, go to guys like Zach Lowe or Bill Simmons. However, there's a clear conflict of interest here. It's well known that Woj is a CAA guy, meaning he's close to lots of people at the Creative Artists Agency, who represents some of the biggest NBA stars. And when there's news, such as a trade, involving one of these players, he's naturally the first to report it. But when the news is negative, like the Ime Yudoka situation, things get messy. Woj and Yudoka have the same agent, and when the news broke about him being fired from the Celtics, the details were blurry, and frankly still are. Shams reported that Yudoka made unwanted comments towards a Celtics staffer. Woj refused to acknowledge this, instead describing it as an intimate relationship. Was Woj covering for him since they have the same agent? That's the theory, but in this industry, we'll never know. Another major issue with Woj is his disdain for LeBron James. This goes all the way back to 2004, when it was clear in his columns he simply didn't like him, but that's a story for another day. I'll end with this. Woj and Shams are being used more and more often as a way to legitimize and release carefully handpicked information to the masses by way of Twitter. Here's a seemingly routine tweet about the Nets exploring trade scenarios for Jay Crowder. But how, and more importantly why, this piece of information got to Woj is what many don't consider. It could have simply been a source within the Nets organization, or it could have been Crowder's agent using Woj to put it out as a feeler to see the reactions and interest level of his client. Their rise has been monumental, and I don't necessarily see that power ending anytime soon. But we as fans need to be aware of the sheer amount of power they have on the NBA and how deals are made. Both Woj and Choms have a track record of working extremely hard. One of them has questionable ethics and an unprecedented level of power that seems to have gotten to his head. In time, we'll see how this all unfolds, but let's all remember, these guys cover a game for a living. They're not saving lives. <laughs>